the way this works is poof here I am welcome I think I have the lighting set up I don't know if it's a hundred percent perfect but it's good enough you should be able to see me I should be a clear voice for you to hear also you'll see behind me here all around that is bougie Linux boom if I click it and then do a little quick sign in <laughs> then you get to see how it's got a nice little active component here oh, wait here um, for the time and it is Monday 16th March we're in the midst of a coronavirus academic epi academic epidemic sound like our sound like the sound like Trump that was horrible we are in the midst of a coronavirus epidemic That's what I was trying to say anyway and I'm at home doing what I normally do streaming writing code listening to some metal uh, so what we're gonna be doing today is basically that stuff we're gonna be doing it like it's just any other day um, so let's get some tunes going and we'll just dive right into this right you're like finding a med kit on one hit point Adrian Hall that's what that little message says that's so hilariously cute <laughs> thanks pretzel thanks pretzel rocks so all right that's that's my desktop background but as you can see I'll be running at the end let's bounce that sucker back up there we go so we're all logged in and my, my icons are crazy whoops crazy small I have to be careful because the bar is down here at the bottom there's my OBS just like uh, my other bar you know my my Mac bar so when I go down here sometimes I get that I don't want that I want this so there we go this is the default load there is nothing else installed on this machine except the operating system itself I love how my shadow flips out with the green screen you can barely see it right now because I guess that's in the darkness which is perfect so, um, yeah, uh, here we go. Firefox. So one thing I want to do is, let's see here. We need to look into fixing the resolution, actually. Why is the resolution so crazy? Let me get that set up for everybody. This was literally not this crazy 10 seconds ago. Oh, it's because it did this nonsense. There's my other 10 by 9. Uh, 10 by 9. There we go. Keep this configuration. Don't lose it again. Jiminy Cricket. Ah, shits. Um, so anyway, here we are. Bougie Linux. This is Firefox. Comes with Firefox by default. So there's a couple things that I need to get installed. We need to install Node.js. Pull that up. So there's a couple ways to do this. And I'm going to show you. I think these are. These are some ways to do it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, thanks for updating it. And then. So you can go out and get Node.js here on the internets, right? And that's all great. You can use Windows installer, Mac OS installer, source code, right? I don't actually want to do that. What I want to do is I want to get this installed on Linux, right? So one of the easiest ways to get it installed in Linux, though, is to use the NVM installer instead of one of those other things. If you have Windows or Mac, way easier to use these options, right? Just use one of those. I wouldn't advise doing the source code right now. Um, here's some Mac, uh, these things have package managers, which you can use to install too. Great sources, they'll work fine, etc. So you like you can use package, install Node.js, Pac-Man, FreeBSD has one. 
etc etc oh and they do also have nvm listed so the other easy way to get nvm installed is to go out to the repo which is right here i will copy it there into i think i'll copy it into chat no i won't because i don't have my two-way stuff going on here i'm going to type it into chat then this is github.com slash nbm.shell slash nbm. There we go. So that is, that's where we're headed. And scroll down, installing and updating. There's two install scripts. You can use curl or wget. Now I'm going to bring up a terminal here. Let's see here, what is my command? So, Bougie has a pretty cool terminal called, let's see, let's find it in here. If I don't find it in here, I'm just gonna hit the shortcut key or something like that. Where is it? No, no? There it is, Tilix. So this one's pretty slick. It's very similar to the Mac OS uh, iTerm 2, where you have like multiple uh, windows and tabs and all that kind of stuff, but we're just gonna be doing a single one here. So let's see here, do I have curl? Let's see. Nope, no curl. Do I have wget? I do have wget, okay. Actually, curl, oh. Oh, curl is installed, so I can do the curl one. Either way, curl or wget, it has a switch in here that you can copy it. And then we'll paste it in here. On Ubuntu, that's Control Shift V, Control Shift C for copy paste into the terminal. On Windows, it's con Control C, Control V, copy paste. Mac, it's Mac button or Apple button, whatever it's called. Uh, Apple C, Apple V. So you know, same thing across the board there. In case you're wondering, some of the keys I'm hitting, just doing the basic stuff. All right, so now it downloaded and it is sitting there, and you'll see. Let's see here, actually, how, how good is that? That's, that's, that's not the command. No, anyway, uh, downloaded the script to this directory, then appended nvm source string to my bash rc. Okay, so it knew what to do there. And then it closed and reopened the terminal, or I need to close and reopen the terminal to use it. So if I type nvm now, um, it says nothing. But if I exit, and then if I do tilix, Oops, that's not the right command. There we go. Got it. Okay, so now I have NVM. NVM basically stands for Node uh, Node Version Manager. So what I want to do with that, let's do this. Let's There we go. If I scroll down, note it also puts this in your bash RC file. That's the thing where it said, you know, you have to open the term or close the terminal and open the terminal back up. And then we go down here. Oh, this is all the install stuff. Let's go back up here and say usage. So, uh, first things first, let's check where we are with node. LTS is 12.16.1. Current is 13.11.0. We'll go ahead and we'll do go with 12.16.1 um, for the first install. So we'll say nvm install node. Um, what is it? 12. Dot, I already forgot. 16.1. Completely ignored that. How do I do that then? So basically, I was, oh, it, you have to just put the version number. So anyway, if you do npm install node, it grabs the latest version, which as you just saw is 13.11.0, which it knows, you know, it knows to check where to check that. But what I wanted to do was actually install 12.16.1. So you have to put the version number and then it'll install that version of node. So there we go. Now we have two node versions. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna write in node, nvm use node um, shell type me node version oh, actually let's do nvm 
which? Because since I just installed it that way, no? Which, oh. I wonder what the... can list available versions using LS remote. Let's do MDM LS. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, so I have... it shows at the top. There we go. That's what I just installed. 12.6.1 and 13.11.0. The default node is set to this. Stable is that and this. Okay, now I want to set my default to 12.16.1 though. So let's see here. NPM 10. No, no, no. Uh, Here you go, players about installing. Default global packages from. Da, 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 da. Let's go to usage again. And then. Oh, probably just NVM use 12.16.1. There we go. Okay. It's clear. So now if I type node, and I think version. Yep, there we go. So now my active version is 12.16.1. So that's how you can change back and forth and get Node installed in what I consider to be one of the easiest ways to install Node.js, which is to use NVM. Again, just bounce out to that path, use curl or wget, and voila, you're good to go. All right, so that's the first thing I'll install. Really? I already got all these patches. Okay, go ahead, install. Then, let's see here. All right. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, here. I got it. There we go. Da, 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 da. Then, the next thing, next thing. What was next on my list? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So next thing, let's bounce back out here. Astra.datastacks.com. So if you pull that up, you'll get this auth screen, right? Um, and then I'm going to log in with my secret username and information. So give me just a minute to do that. Okay, it's gonna take me a second. Bear with me. Uh, why? Why so hard? Almost got it, I think. Aha! And I have been successful. With that in mind, let's jump back into this code. All right, so I don't have a database created for this session, so I'm gonna show you how. Once you create an account and you log in, just like I did, uh, you'll have the option to create a free tier database, which is just a free database. Ongoing, no charges, free forever. Uh, the data doesn't go anywhere, it's there, it's in the database. It's a distributed database based on Apache Cassandra. Um, so, you know, why not? That's what we're going to use. It's pretty awesome to have a free database option like that. So let's do that. Now, of course, you could do a starter configuration in AWS or GCP. You have a lot more options for that. 
like US West 1, for example, as a data center. Um, and you can start with various things, and it shows you the charge here, which goes up quite drastically because we are talking about a full distributed database like US West 2. Let's look at that. You know, there you go. You're looking at some pretty serious charges, but we're just going to use a free database for right now. So let's pick our option. We're going to go with US East 1. And then we're going to call this BetterBots. Key space of the same name, BetterBots. The key space you can kind of think of if you're not familiar with Cassandra. That's kind of like your, like if you went into Postgres or SQL Server, Oracle, something like that, and you just created a database, a singular database, that's kind of what the key space is. There's a lot more added context to it than that. It's not a database. Your database is your cluster overall, which could have you know, many key spaces, except in Astra, where you go by one key space at a time per database, okay? So we've segmented it down to that specific detail to simplify things and make things easier to use. So you name your key space, and then we're gonna go with database name. We'll just go with better bots, and then my secret password. And there we go. And now we're going to launch the database. Oh, did I did I mess up my tier? Hmm. Let's try that again. Uh-oh. Grabbing that one. Oh, I didn't do my key right. All right, so let's let's refresh this page and see what we get. There we go. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> ah, there we go. I don't know what happened there before, but it was just a little confused about the location. Um, so in this sense, you saw this change in the background just now where it's, it only limits now to chargeable databases because the free one is consumed because it's being built right now. It might take 30 minutes, but usually it takes dramatically less time to get the database up and running. I'm gonna go ahead and hit, let's view the database, and it looks like it's already there. So hey, we're ready to go, right? This tells you some pertinent information. That's all nice and dandy, but the key things to know are, one, you have a CQL console right here. So I can log in with that with the credentials that I just put in, better bots. And then I can start issuing actual CQL statements against the database. Uh, um, so asterisk from system schema, I think I can do. Let's try that. So just hit enter. Oh, I need to put the semicolon to end the statement. Um, no key space has been specified. Oh yes, I need to put the key space, of course. So when you're just writing plain old CQL in the statement, you need to actually add the key space here to a table, create table, whatever it is that you're doing. I say it does not exist. Schema system, wait, system schema, something like that. Oh, I've forgotten the table name. Anyway, you can issue statements here. But let's see here. What is the table name in a SQL database? I'm going to look this up real quick, so bear with me. Um, actually, we'll look it up together. Let's go look at... So here's where we have some of our reference application repos. So there's DataGen, PEF application, and GUI glitch. These are the things that we will be using over time to show how to use Astra in various ways. So let's see, this one has a database section. And this is where I create some stuff. Let's actually run, let's run a create statement. I'm going to copy that. We'll go back over here. 
they just run the create statement. Paste. Boom. Oh, the reason this is happening is maybe the underlying database isn't actually up and running. Whatever the case, mm, yeah. So go back to summary and let's do two things. One, we'll take a look at the developer studio while things spool up. All right, we are logged in now. So we can create a new notebook, and let's just call this test run. There we go. And in here, let's actually take some of our query examples, and we'll just we'll create these two tables from here. And run that, and let's see how things go. In just a second, we'll get a notification. Oh, whoops. There it goes. Better. Actually, I don't need to do that. So in this tool, you don't have to designate key space because the key space is automatically inserted in by designating it here. Now, I could, if I wanted to, actually put it in here like this to follow good form, but it's not necessary. Now let's just do a select ID name this oh, description price created from better bots. And if I hit control space, I'll actually get an autocomplete, which is nice. So let's go with products. Okay, I'm going to run that, and I should get nothing, because we've not put anything in the table. Let's bounce back over here, go into the database. And I think this is where I put it. Yep, okay. So here is our queries to insert some initial products. I'm going to paste that in. And boom. And there we go. We have data. So what we've done so far is we've created some tables to products and orders. We got some, we try to select, but it showed no data, which is what we should have because we just created the tables. Then we inserted some data and then we did a query and got back that data. So that's a good get started way to check out or get something into your database just to Try it out, see what you can do with it, um, get some things shipped that way. Now, if I bounce out of this developer studio though, and I come down here to connect an application, learn how, right? We have this package, this security package, which holds some very important information that you don't want to share with anybody and you don't want to just pass around. But I'm gonna download that and we'll go ahead and say save file. There, so I got that saved locally and let's I'm gonna put this out here on my desktop for now and then go in here I'm gonna click on learn how let's check out these docs for a second so there's various ways you can connect to an Astro database using one of the drivers that Datastax has provided and we'll be adding support for other stacks as we go along but several of the key ones right now are, there's the data stacks drivers, go down here and you can see a list. We got C++, C Sharp, Java, Node.js, Python, um, and I feel like I'm missing one. And we'll have Go and other languages soon. So for now though, let's jump down to the Node.js driver and just have this documentation ready. As you can see, NPM install Cassandra driver, uh, add a few details and then you can make a connection and run a query to do whatever you need. Insert data, delete data, and all that kind of jazz. So let's get this. We'll leave the studio running. I'm gonna close my data gen app. I'm gonna also close the ref app for now because we don't need those. 
But this one, this one you may want to check out. GitHub.com Reptano, BetterBots GUI at Glitch. And this is another thing I will type and actually put in our, where did my Twitch go? There it is, there's chat. I'm gonna actually put it in here. repo here it's publicly available so you can go check it out it will work in glitch which is this tool and we'll be doing some of our demos in the future and building onto the app using this interface um, but right now the core things that we've been doing is just working on it with just using Visual Studio Code um, and tools that probably a lot of people are fairly familiar with but the key is Visual Studio Code. That's, that's the one I've been using so far to do this. But as we build it out, we'll be using Visual Studio Code and Glitch to a large degree. Should be fun. We're gonna do some, pull some data out of things, put some data into things, and prospectively even get some graphs and charts and things like that displayed. So I'm gonna close that for now. Come back over here. And let's get into where is the next thing? Some of what the material I'm going to cover right now, too, is worth checking out. And it is on dev.2 BetterBots account, which let's go take a quick look at that. Oops, I opened the wrong thing again. So definitely go follow this account. So far, we have two blog entries up there. Um, we have building better blocks applications and this is basically what we just covered going through getting the database started using the CQL shell uh, creating some tables inserting some data getting that data back right so this is a great resource we're gonna be posting in blog form all this stuff that I'm talking about on the Twitch channel and I'll also be archiving a lot of this stuff and cutting it up into more bite-sized chunks so that people can check out this material and use the bite-sized chunks more readily to figure out how to do things like connect to Astra, get better bots running, get an ExpressJS app running, or whatever else that I've been showing. All right, so dev.2, super cool site. Like I was saying, dev.2 slash better bots. Go check it out. So the next thing we're going to be doing is this, what may look somewhat similar. It's BetterBots again, and we're going to be creating an express server for BetterBots. We want to lay out a good foundation and then move through it, get NPM to install the Cassandra driver for our Node.js application, get ExpressJS installed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's see here. Whoops. I want to minimize this. Now we're going to go in here. And just get my everything prepped for this. in my information and stuff on my other screen and I'm using to talk through this to make sure that I stay on course and don't get off track. Um, all right, the next thing, next, next thing, next. All good on volume and everything. I shall continue then. All right, the next thing we want to do is, let's look in here, let's create ourselves a directory. I always like to create a codes directory where I put all my code. I'm gonna move into that, there we go. 
And then our next step is to create a directory. We're gonna make a directory, again, where we're gonna create our application. Um, and I'm gonna follow the same path and everything that I did whenever I created the original app that I'm basically recreating now from GitHub. And it's called, what is it? I just, I just like the name. Oh yeah, Better Bots GUI at Glitch. All right, so we got that in there. And now, one of the things we wanna do is, let's go ahead and start a node project. One of the best ways to start a node project is to type npm init, okay? Now you can go through and just hit enter a bunch, everything will be fine. I'm gonna go with that name for that. And we'll go with 0.0.1. .0 .1. Description, a node.js application using express.js and other elements to connect to Astra database as a service from data stacks. There we go, entry point. Eh, index.js sounds great. Uh, we'll leave that blank for now. The git repo, um, should I put that in there? Yeah, let's put it in there. Git at github.com. And I'm going to have my own local one, right? Because I eventually I would fork off of here or whatever. But whatever the case, um, I'm working at. Fooey, just lost it. Yeah. So to be github.com, I'm going to use the public one, Rotano. And you can do the same thing. If you clone it, you'll get this, or you can just add this and then resync it, blah, 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 whatever you want to do. At which. Okay, keywords. To express, um, JS, sample, starter, introduction, database as a service, Apache, Cassandra, I don't know, that sounds great. And I'm just gonna put my name, and we'll go with uh, the one I usually remember, actually, yeah, I will go with Apache 2.0. There we go. So that is the init file that it's going to create, or packages file, whatever. Oh, I typed the wrong thing. Whoops. Anyway, you get to see what happens when you just hit enter a bunch. So now I have a packages package.json file. So if I type code and open up this directory, oh, code is not installed. So let's actually get that real quick. sudo snap install code. Well, I need to do... If you understand what to proceed, repeat the command, including classic. Okay. Yeeks! Uh, so yeah, I guess what is going on here is Snap is an installer, package manager, for, uh, well, it's one that Bougie Linux uses because Bougie Linux is a distro variant of Ubuntu. Um, and it's a Linux package manager, basically, for software. Similar to add and remove programs or whatever Windows calls it now that adds and removes programs. Similar, probably more similar to if you go into the Windows Store or if you go into the App Store for Apple, Mac OS or app store for your phone or whatever. So same thing there, that's basically a command line version of that. So now we have code installed. So I think I can do code now. Let's see. It looks like it worked, but did it? There we go. So first run of Visual Studio Code, there we go. And there is our package file. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put my name in here. Oops. Uh, and more specifically, I'm gonna actually scroll up here and grab this one that I intended to create. Copy that, and I'm gonna paste it in there. Ta-da! The other thing I'm gonna do is close Tilix. Because what I can do with Visual Studio Code is 
hit control tilde, and boom, I have a terminal. Okay, there's our file so far. Let's get into making something. <clears throat> so first thing I want to do is make a directory, and I'm going to call it data. But I'm going to call it dot data, so it's hidden. This is a directory that Glitch actually hides that I can put secret files in, right? So I want to put a secret file in this one here and then find a secure way, which we'll talk about later, um, to get that secret file into Glitch in its secret dot data directory in a secure way. Because you can't just put it in your Git repo. You want to ignore the dot data file so it's not uploaded to Git repo where people can get your secret file. So with that, let's also add a git ignore file. Oops, git ignore. The first thing I want to add to that is one oops, ds store, keep those Mac uh, hidden files out of there, then our data directory, and then let's also add .ida. So if I use WebStorm or any other JetBrains products, it'll keep the IDE configuration options out of the repo. Now with Node.js, there's a billion other things too. And one way to check that out, let's see if we can find it. It's not what I want to do, come back here. There we go. So GitHub, not git, ignore templates. If you put that in and you bounce here, you'll find a whole bunch of templates. Basic, basically got dot .git ignore files that you can start with from scratch for your projects without having to go in and add a bunch of stuff yourself. Hello, Frackberg, how you doing? So, let's scroll way down here, finding Node.js, oh, no, no, uh, the alphabet is not my strong point right now. Here's Node, here's Node. So you click on these, and this is a good place, this template directory, to pick up some git ignore files. So I'm gonna copy everything You had a teacher named Mr. Hall. That's rather interesting. I hear that the Halls are good teachers, but I don't know. That's like the worst joke I have made in so long. Uh, <laughs> so, bounce into here, paste all that in. Now we get us a nice, glorious get ignore file. Okay, so good package JSON, good get ignore file. Then, we want to npm install globally the express generator. Boom. That was somewhat shockingly fast. Okay. All right. Now, next thing. Next. Blah, 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 blah. I think if I just do express. Uh, empty continue. Yes. Just like that. Boom. All right, look at this. Look at what we got. What do we got us a bin now? Oh, and a raid from Source Scoot. Thank you for the raid. Welcome to the pit, all seven of us. It's a virtual pit today, because you know, safety first or something. Um, writing a little Node.js, building a little Express.js app to pull some data from Astra, database as a service. Um, and that's it, just doing some simple stuff today. Munging it all together. How was the stream, Sir Scoop? Good stuff. I watched for a few minutes earlier, uh, but I was in the midst of trying to eat and trying to do 50 million other things at the same time. So I didn't particularly say hello. Oh, what? I get. Oh, it's interesting. I guess Stream Elements is tripping. Because. It said rated, hosted, rated. Yeah, that's cool. Either way, welcome. Started out great? What happened? Did, did stuff go sideways? <laughs> yeah, double boom boom raid. Yeah, so weird. I don't know. Sometimes the raid stuff is, is twitchy. Ha ha ha. I'm into the real serious dad jokes today. Like really hardcore serious dad jokes. Yeah, well, everybody, and I do mean everybody, is on the freaking internet today. 
Oh, that was a follow, but it... Oh, there it went. Okay, okay. Landed. Thank you for following. Welcome to the Mosh Pit. Oh, yeah, has been a day. So the internet's crazy, Discord's crazy, Twitch is being twitchy, you know. Lurk while I practice my code and work on my portfolio in the background, awesome heart. What's your portfolio, what you working on? Oh yeah. Not work like it didn't move, didn't build. That's, that sounds like all my code as of late. It didn't move, didn't build, didn't run, didn't do what it's supposed to at all, and somehow it got written. So, I just ran Express.js, and what I got from that was these cool default files, which gives me a project to run. I already set up an npm init, right? Set up a git ignore by going out and grabbing a git ignore off. Just typed in dot git ignore npm. No, wait, what did I type? Git ignore something something. What did I actually type in there? Whatever I typed in there, it worked. Oh yeah, GitHub git ignore templates. That has all the templates that when you create a repo from GitHub, they give you the option to use. In this case, I just went out to it directly, went down to the specific one I wanted, boom, grabbed it, copied it, and threw it in my Git ignore. So now it's there and we're ready in case I wanna like put this in a repo, right? The only thing I need to do now is git init. Oh, and again, Linux by default doesn't always have git in there, especially the Ubuntu install. So let's do sudo sudo apt install git. Sudo, or, or apt, actually, right? Yeah, not sudo. Apt is another package manager type of mechanism, similar to the other one I used 10 seconds ago. Um, ah, to manage software on Linux. And you wanted, to, <laughs> you wanted to shoot the guy. Sounds brutal. Oh, I'm typing the wrong system password. There we go. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I want to continue. So we're going to install git. Moments like this is when I'm really happy that I have fiber. Because I know the whole freaking world is on the internet right now. Boogie lightning. Thanks for lurking. Um... I don't have any commands turned on. I sincerely apologize. I really need to get the, the uh, plug in too, where uh, it shows whenever a live coder bounces on, posts their link and all that kind of jazz. Because I've been part of the group since like almost day one. I don't know, I was like 10th member or something. But I'm being such a slacker. Uh, kind of have cut down on my Twitch streaming as of late. But I'm ramping it back up. We're gonna get a bunch of shit built. Bunch of awesome stuff built, and hopefully some metal jams uh, put together in the in the coming days. Because I'll be at home a lot, like a lot of people. On that note, next steps, right? We got git install, so now I can say type in git init, and that'll initialize the repo. So now I can actually add stuff. And what I always add first is my dot git ignore file, because. I don't want things to become a mess. You put the git ignore file in there and make sure you have your appropriate git ignore items and everything will run smoothly going forward. You want to like go unadd stuff or delete stuff out of the commit log or whatever, or prune or whatever it is that needs to happen. So with that, git add all the other bits. Uh, git commit, oh, I was gonna just commit the ignore, but then I'll just do everything. Since I know I did it in the right order anyway, Oh, another thing you have to do when you first set up Git. You gotta set up a global user email. And you need to configure the global username, user.name. There we go, clear. Now, uh, oh, I already did that, but anyway, Git. Added all that stuff. First, commit. There we 
we go. Get status. There we go. We're all we're all up to speed up. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could add a remote and then go ahead and push it up to GitHub, but that's another topic for another day. The important thing that I want to do right now, though, is actually run the app to make sure it works. So I have the bin directory, dub, dub, dub. This file with Express is used to launch the application and launch other peripheral things that you need, such as the port number, um, as you can see right here. And it starts other middleware and or other elements for general debugging and things like that. So that file generated, oh, not ready. The reason is didn't do npm install. There we go. I generated it, but it's and it's got new stuff in the package.json file. Right, here we go. These are the things that it needed. Jade is the template engine, which will render things for us. Uh, Express is the main engine that we're using. And then there's other stuff like cookie parts or debug, HTTP errors, etc. So all that's in there. And it says it found four vulnerabilities, which we are not going to deal with right now. We're just going to run it. So it doesn't really give you a message or anything. But it should be out there. Localhost. Is that my phone? I don't even have my phone set up much. I just fixed that up today because I washed my phone in the laundry. That's right, y'all heard it here first. I washed my phone in the laundry. Not smart, uh, but you know, shit happens. So localhost, 3000 I believe was the port number. Boom, there's our app. So we have an Express.js website running. Okay, pretty, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. It's like two things. Um, and we're doing it from scratch here. So if you're following through on this this uh, Twitch session, I'm hitting all the bases, including like I just did. Installed Git, installed Express, installed Node, everything from scratch. All right, we got our, I downloaded the database credentials earlier and we created our .data directory also. So what I need to do now is, let's actually, what is the file? manager in here because I'm going to use the file manager or I would like to use the file manager to do this. Science programming, office internet, Firefox, uh, oh yeah, Plank is another thing. Where is, oh files, it's just files, okay cool. That's our little thing. Um, Okay, so we downloaded zip to here. I'm just going to rename it to secure bundle, I think. And then I am going to, I will cut it and then go to oops, home. It's my codes directory, project directory. And then I'm going to paste it here for the time being and open up a terminal. There's Tilix again. So in here, if I show everything, as you can see, there's a dot data directory. And we need a copy secure bundle to it's dot data secure bundle dot zip. And there it is. Okay. So I did a copy. It doesn't really need to be in the root. So let's remove secure bundle from here because we also don't want to accidentally commit it to the repo. Do not do that. Do not commit secrets to repos. Get status. And okay, the package lock. Yeah, we need to add that. Get add. Just adding the package lock.json file. All right, get status. Cool, everything's clean for the moment. We have that in there. We have that initial bit running. And a er little earlier, ran this, and we know we have data in the database. So we're almost ready. Let 
Next step, let's npm install Cassandra, I believe, right? So where is that? I feel like I've lost my, oh, there we go. We start later. Let's kill the server. We're gonna do an npm install. What was it? Cassandra driver. There we go, we got that now. So if we go into our package.json, you can verify it by finding Cassandra driver 4.4.0. That is the version that we want. So now, let's let's just do a, let's see, how should we do this? We have various pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about that. So in the repo, we have temp uh, templates, which are used to render the HTML, etc., out to the world. And it's done with uh, kind of a form of markdown. I guess it is a markdown right here. Here's a, here's a simple thing that prints out that Express.js title, which I showed just a minute ago. This is the index.jade that spits that stuff out. Um, then we have routes. So the view is something that's used to template the response that a route will return whenever an end user, i.e. someone surfing the web, makes an HTTP request to get a web page, right? Because that's what you do with a browser all day long is get requests against web pages. All right, so here is our first uh, router route uh, to get slash, which is the root element of the whole thing. So that's all fine and dandy. Um, let's see, your next step would be to, let's go into, yeah, let's put this in here. Hmm. So we need to do a couple things. We'll set up a constant for the path and we'll call it, we'll start at where we are Go to the directory and then secure connect. Oops. Secure connect dot zip, I believe is what I called it. And then we want to set up the client. Oops. Client. There we go. Based off of the driver. There we go. Oh, that's nice. There's just a good code. Give me some autocomplete. And then let's set up the client as new client. Ah. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. So set up a new client. We want to do cloud. Uh, right. yep, and then secure connect bundle. Oh, that introspection is so much better these days in here. And then we want credentials. Now these credentials are the same ones that you set up the account with, the same thing that we logged into the notebook with or into the CQL shell. So here though, I'm gonna put in so your username. Oh, the song. Love this song. Environment dot astra username. And then we're going to do password. And we're going to do astra oops, process dot environment dot astra password. And that, I think, covers the base of cloud credentials. Yep. Yeah, we're good there. Okay. So this will, basically what we're doing here is we're setting up a client that's gonna use the credentials that you provide it via environment variables, but also the bundle, that file that's in the .data directory is used to secure the pipe and encryption and everything across the wire 
into the database to ensure security. So, hmm, next thing to do, next thing to do, ah, let's get this spitting something out that we want. Here, let's just put better bots. Ha ho! Digital drummer. Thank you for the sub. Nice. And welcome to the stream. Just doing a little JavaScripty Node.js stuff. Uh, so next router, it's router dot get and stuff. I did it wrong. What did I type wrong? I typed something. I fat fingered something. Oh, I did this again. I let my IDE spit me out of my parentheses sometimes, and I end up with braces outside of my parentheses and then I'm like ah what happened and trying to find like one parenthesis or one brace it's freaking pain in the ass all right so what do we want to do here we want to do well, first let's fill out this sucker uh, so the path we'll do Yeah, let's do this. We'll, do, we'll call it uh, data report. I think that's how I actually called it in the repo that I already created. Function, and that stuff, yep. Rec, response, that's for request and response. And then here we'll want to say, I'm gonna create a function. I'll get more datas. And we'll just make it a little dummy thing so far. So then we'll get more data dot. We'll call it dot. There we go. And then, because it's going to return a promise, because it's going to be going out to get data, and the driver returns a promise in that. So we want to take action on a promise. So this is then function data. Right, yep, okay, closure. Then res dot render. Yep. Data report. So we'll make a data report uh, Jade template too for this to get all the data to show right. And thank you, Beat Coder, for jumping into the pit. Welcome to the stream. Oh, let's see. Data. Yep, I just did that. And then. Oh, there we go again, messing up parentheses and stuff. Ah! Ah, again. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, there we go. Right? Right? Yes. Okay. Close. End statement. And then... Yes, and then here, dot... Yeah. Oh. I guess if I... Well... Could probably fill it out if I knew what I was trying to do with the function below. Function. Filter data. Did I spell it right? Yeah, I did. Okay. So then res. Oops. Dot send. Filtered data. I don't know. Well, that's going to work. It's going to work for now. <laughs> All right. So, this actually needs to be. Yeah, this needs to be an async function. And then we need to bounce in here and let's do a constant. Call this the result. 
and await response client.execute. We'll put in select customer name, address. Uh, yeah, what the heck, we'll go with this. I was gonna do orders, but let's do products. I mean, I was gonna do products, but let's do orders. Then description, price, prod ID, prod name, sell price from better bots dot orders. And then let's put semicolon and then another semicolon to end our JavaScript statement. And then we're going to return result. We are going to spell it right. Result dot Rosa. Boom. So that'll actually return a promise. So like now here, if I was to come in here and type, oh shit. Dot catch. Yeah, see it, it auto completes it now because it knows it's a promise. So I should have actually wrote the async function first and then written that, but whatever, I did what I did. Um, New file, call it data report.jed. Spell it right? Yeah, I think I spelled it right. Alright. So then, what we want to do. Oh, I got, I got band aid glue on my thumb. Be careful with boxes, you'll cut yourself right up. You know, they can be dangerous sometimes. Anyway, so we're going to go with body. Then there's a header. You need to spell it right. Oh, look, see, it knows, it knows, it knows what's up. And h1 equals title. Um, and then we want to do oh, I'm putting this in the wrong thing. Let's not, let's not do this here. Let's do Layout. There we go. Kill that stuff. All right. There we go. Title. Head, head, header. Uh, I'm going to. I'll. Uh, I wonder what the difference is. Anyway, title. Header, and then one's head. So, well, anyway, whatever, whatever. Let's do main. And we'll create a little. Should we go with div p? What's the, how do you do a delineation, a separation, a breakout in HTML these days? What's the, what's the actual practice? What's the standard say? Does anybody know? Is it like section? Oh, div for. For just a hot minute, we'll put div. So if anybody knows the answer to my question, I would greatly appreciate an answer because I don't actually know at the minute. Welcome to the title site to help you build what you need for your better bots empire. Yeah, there we go. And then we're gonna go back to a footer. And then say powered by. Let's get a space in there. DSP. That guarantees we're gonna have a space because that's the space code, right? And we're gonna put in a href equals https astra data stats dot com, right? And we'll say data stats astra. Okay, we're getting so much closer now.
<sighs> um, hmm. I feel like we're missing something. Well, anyway, okay, so that's the layout now. So let's go look at that real quick. set that up. Go with, uh, we're gonna put better bots, and then Astra password is gonna be better bots, I think. But no. Credentials, username, and password must be a string. Did I goof that up somehow? That is... Let's do this. Let's uh, actually put those two environment variables in our actual startup script. So we put export. Um, so Astra Astra username equals. We'll put in better bots and then export. Astra, oops, password to better bots to better bots. point. There we go. Is it container? Yeah, the container. Is it? Is it? Is it that? Yeah, that's, I think that is what it is. You do div? No, I thought it was. I thought it was like this part, the the div part. Like that was the new standard. I don't. I don't really keep track of this stuff because it seems to go back and forth every five years. Now I feel old. I so say every five years of HTML, it goes back and forth. Whatever. I guess there is a long cycle on it. Maybe it's every 10 years. Now I'm even older. Ancient even. Let's use simple div. Oh, okay. I mean, whatever works. That's the, that's the main thing, right? You want stuff to show up correctly. <laughs> All right. So now if I run source again, There we go. Bash RC. Now, if I echo one of these, all right, we have the datas. So now I can just type node bin dub dub dub, and I should be able to run the website. There we go. Powered by data stacks, bounces us back out of here, but I'm gonna go back here and then we are gonna, whoa! By the way, Zipax, great name, great name. I like that one. Simple, straightforward, Boogie Lightning. Thanks for lurking and thanks for jumping into Mosh Pit, the code pit, code pit, pit of code. Unexpected co block content. Luck is never used. Whatever. Shut up about your jade problems. Um, oh yeah, so now we're gonna do some data report, as you can see here, data report. 
let's go into this and create a data report. So what we want here is, uh, let's see, we want it extends layout, right? And then we're gonna do block content, uh, and then H1 customer orders, then unordered list. I think we want, well, eh, it should work. For order and data, I think that's what I called it. <laughs> this might not be right. So doing a list item and then a div, and then we got to do. We have we had. Uh, Let's see your customer name. That's one for sure. And then we have. Let's do this. We're gonna do a div for the customer. And then we'll have. Uh, there's like a description, I think. Oh, there's address. And then a description like that. Okay. And let's see, we need to designate what's gonna go here. Call it so we select in it, returns here, data, Let's save that I think, okay we'll do order, so we're stepping through order, data is the data object that was in, noted, note here, data and here, data, right? That's the thing that's being passed into the template to be rendered, okay? So that data object will have all the data pieces. So for every order, and I'm naming it here order, so that we can order dot, and then it should have the various pieces on it, like customer name from that query, right? So customer name, Order. Yes, then order dot description. And then let's do uh, else list item. No orders currently. Right? Boom. Looks like a bunch of stuff. Let's uh, run that. So there's our main page and then data report. Oh, is this not to secure connect zip? Let's go back in there and see what we got. So there's data. Oh, not secure connect. I called it secure bundle. Well, let's just rename this. Okay, that shows up. Arr! What happened to... layout, but then, oh, then I have index. I don't even want that anymore. Or no, that can stay. Then layout is this, welcome to da 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 da. Well, actually, okay, let's, in index, let's do what content because I got all the message in the other the other file in the layout oh then this does why well, use the zip uh oh wait it doesn't 
the show. Anyway, it's got a bunch of different files. There's like seven files in it. You can open it up. It's it's your data whenever you, or it's your security information to get logged in. Um, but it puts a lot of stuff in there that's pertinent to the database. As the database spools up, it has a path, uh, encryption keys and elements, private, public pay, key pair, etc. Um, that you need to make a secure connection between the client side and the server side. And we wanted to make, uh, well, it doesn't need to be JSON because several of the files come from different things. So you want one to be the key as it's expected. You want the public and private respectively to be separate because one needs to be used in one way, one needs to be used in the other way. There's other pieces that, like some of it may actually be in JSON, matter of fact. But let's, let's take a look. We'll, we'll talk about it just for a second. So you're open in open containing folder. Somewhere? Did it did it open? I guess it whatever. Ah, there we go. Okay, so what? No, 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 no. Come on. So it's secure connect and then right click and then open commanding folder. Oh, there it is. Okay, it opened at that time. So let's just extract this stuff. Go look at it, right? So yeah, here's your CRT cert. This cert, I don't remember what some of these are. So we do have a config JSON, right? So we look at this. You can see the key spaces designated the local uh, data center. Host information, which is like totally top secret. But this is the actual path, URI path location of where the database is at that you want to reach out to. Uh, port information, and then all the key certs, key store location, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of stuff, right? So each of those files is important, and they're basically stored in their native format that they're given based on when they're created from key pair generation and things like that. So is that, th does that answer the question? Is that cool? Uh, Zipax? Zipix, Zipix. Uh, I like zip axe, zip packs. One of those things, one of those statements. Oh, need to stretch. Ah. To, to do which thing? Oh, shit. Um, Twitch, stop changing my password. Thank you for the follow. Twitch, stop changing. Twitch, stop changing my password. Password. Welcome to the pit. Um, what kind of framework? We, uh, uh, for, for this thing that I'm making? Or the thing... So, it's a database as a service, so there's a lot of frameworks. It uses a ton of stuff. Oh, for Node.js. So what we're using right here, right now, is just the Cassandra driver from Data Strax. Strax, blah, can't talk. The Node.js Cassandra driver from Data Strax that we have available. Uh, Node.js, right? And Express, and that's it. I think that's it at this point. This is a default Express app. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible with as minimal amount of extra cruft added in at in the in the near future we'll take this example and move past this we'll, we'll like plug in react for the templates instead of jade we might use vue.js something like that but right now it's just node.js express.js for the server and the template engine which we're using the jade template engine and then the cassandra node.js driver to pull data out of the astra database as a service And I think we got most of that listed here. Yeah, so Jade, Express, and then Cookie Driver. These other bits are just stuff Express puts in here. It's just, like debug is just, well debug is for debugging. Um, then Cookie Parser, parses cookies whenever Express needs to do cookie parsing, I guess. Jade is that template engine. Uh, Morgan, I forget what Morgan is exactly, some middleware component? Uh, I bet somebody in here knows, right? Somebody knows somewhere. 
Uh, and then HTTP errors is the HTTP error handler. That's what that is. Use Hamel and Ruby on Rails, but for long-term development, not yet. Oh yeah, yeah. So Jade is very similar to Hamel or a Hamel clone, something like that. Uh, let's derail just for a minute and actually figure that out. Jade, Jade template. Yeah, so it's a template, node template engine. Language reference, attributes, blah, 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 command line API. Oh, they don't have it, it's not secure. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Um, now let's do this, let's, okay. It's Cause that's, that's not useful. Jade template history. Okay. Oh, that's that thing. Not yeah, not to be confused with that. So clearly, <laughs> I guess uh, we don't get to know the history of it. React framework, a template language for should we name to pug. Oh, what? Name Pug is sickening. All I think of are Pugly, Ugly Mug, Doug. Yeah, so anyway, it's a template, it's a template engine just like Hamel, etc. I don't like a tab based template. Oh, yeah. Um, you can do spaces. I don't think you have to do tabs. But, but I digress. I'm not going to keep using it. Just getting started here. Getting some data, making sure we're making a good connection, those types of things, right? So, like, I have data report here. Speaking of, so I know I have data in product, but even this, I should get like a little something. Data report, am I passing the wrong damn template? So, here, let's see, routes, oops, public, routes, users, index. On the index. So here I'm passing the template data report data, and the template is right where here it is. That's it, right. And then this is the same thing. Block content extends layout. Content, customer's orders. I'm getting this. This is the, oh, do I need to, crap. I don't have something to automate the restart. Um, there's tooling out there now that when you make changes, it'll restart the node server for you so you get the reflection of those changes. But I bet, oh, still nothing? This is unsettling. All right, so what did I do wrong here? So let's just, let's put this in get more data. Get more data. Get more data, get more data. Then, so if we have data report here. Test, no. Oh, what are we getting? We're getting 500. Unexpected block content, line three of error.jade. Oh, that's that thing.
So that says 200. Unexpected block content in line three. And this thing, this block is never used. Oh, layout. Um, layout block is what? Oh, this is where every block like content. Of course, you gotta you gotta put it in there somewhere. That's what I didn't do. I, I didn't add it in here. So let's add uh, pain body. No, it is block content. I think block. Keep your fingers crossed. Stuff is all sorts of messed up here. All right, that did it. Is this, yeah, sure, Ramirez and relaunch that application? What was the app that crashed? There we go. That's what we expected. So there are no orders currently. That is true. So let's actually write an insert statement. What? Yeah, 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 whatever. Go ahead. Um, we'll just put it right in here. We'll say insert into uh, better bots dot orders. Oh, yeah, orders. Um, this values this. So in orders, we want to have the IDE, which will be a. How do you do that? Let's see here. what the command here is. Oh yeah, you just do that, okay. That's fine, let's do that. So now, ID, and then we want an address, prod ID, prod name, description, price, sell price, Customer name. Oops. Name. So this is going to be the address. Um, let's say one, two, three, someplace, Reno, Nevada. And then Let's go with, we'll buy some precision action arms. Precision action arms. It's probably precision action arms. And what's up next? So then description. Arms for precision activities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super excited. Uh huh. And then we have what is it? Oh, let's put it down the line here.
sell price. Let's give them a discount. Instead of twelve one ninety nine, it'll be twelve ninety nine dot ninety nine. Then we want to do what? So that's price, sell price, and then customer name. And we'll say Julianne Lee. Okay, and then let's just run just that one by selecting this like this. And then click and run local. There we go. So now, if I go down, theoretically, boom! We have data in the database and it has been returned to us into our template. Whew! So that was, that was a little bit trippier than I had expected it to be. Um, but we got it installed and we got it set up and running, which is cool. Um, Fuji desktop on, let's see, a virtual machine for this sesh. Uh, da, da, da. This is <laughs> People cracking me up about saying you can uh, prevent coronavirus by shooting it in the face. <sighs> yeah, not so much. Um, <laughs> I love this. I see ads like... Uh, IBM Global Technology Services. More than 90% of IT professionals in IDC's CloudView survey indicated that they would evolve their digital transformation strategies to encompass multi-cloud postures this year. Yeah, you going multi-cloud right now? Is that what we're doing? Amidst coronavirus? Oh man, I don't know. Whew, crazy stuff. So, um, Oh my god. Who is Louis Gomer? Yeah, everybody should go like kick him. They know who that guy is. Anyway, on that note, who should we raid? Because I am wrapping up for the day. I need to eat food and play video games and stare out the window at the wonderful weather. So who should we raid? I know somebody's jamming. Oh, Robert Tables. You know what? Haven't raided Robert Tables in forever, so let's raid Robert Tables. How about, huh? Uh, you know. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Here we go. So everybody join me in raiding Robert Tables. Uh, we'll be over there in just a second. I'm entering it now. The countdown begins again. Oh, and it's a channel intended for mature audiences. So enjoy it to the max, everybody. It's going to be extra awesome. You know it because if it's not intended for all audiences, it's definitely truthful. Anyway, on that note, keep thrashing, tear your code up, and hopefully everything compiles for you. Have a good one. Until next time.